MeshKit 3 introduces some powerful new features to combine an Atlas skinned mesh renderers. In this video we'll explore how they work and the benefits of using each one. In this example scene I have 5 characters with skinned mesh renderers. When we press play we can see that we're using 19 set pass calls, 9 shadow casters, 5 visible skinned meshes and 1 animation system. As we look through the hierarchy of our characters and take a look at each of their skinned mesh renderers, we'll notice that they're using different shaders. For example, some are using standard shaders and one is using the legacy Bunt Diffuse shader. We're also using a mix of animation systems, but this won't be a problem for MeshKit. So to get started, we have to allow MeshKit to set up a custom component on our game object to handle the process. We can do this easily by pressing the Setup Combine button and confirming the dialog by pressing yes. We can now choose between the two combined modes available for skinned mesh renderers. The first mode combines the meshes and uses a material array. This is the fastest approach and is compatible with most setups. Let's apply this to our characters and see what happens. This mode has created a new renderer, a new mesh and an array of the old materials accessing each of its sub meshes. There isn't any benefit in set pass calls, but we have dropped the visible skinned meshes from 5 down to 1. As you can see, this approach focuses on optimizing the overhead of animations. If we look through the old renderers, we can see that MeshKit has disabled them so we can test our new setup. Now that we're done testing out this approach, we can easily undo it by going back to the MeshKit window and pressing the undo combine button. We can now look at the next approach. Combine Meshes with Texture Atlasing This approach allows us to not only combine the meshes of these characters, but also to combine all of their textures into a single texture atlas, which will also be optimized for set pass calls as well as animation overhead. The first thing we need to do is tell MeshKit which shader texture properties we want to combine. MeshKit makes this easy by offering us a quick setup drop-down list with common setups we can customize. I'll start with the basic standard shader template. You'll notice that it has now populated the list with the core texture properties used in the standard shader. On the left is the name of the texture property, and on the right is the default texture MeshKit should use if it's missing on one of the objects. So here we're telling MeshKit that when we're combining the main text property, we should use a white texture if it's missing. For the bump map property, we should use a normal texture. The metallic gloss should be grey, the occlusion map should be white, and the emission map should be a transparent black. We then have a few more options. We can choose to bake the colour property into the main texture atlas. This is helpful in cases where you have a tint set up, like I have on the purple teddy bear. This will ensure it is baked into the bear's portion of the atlas without affecting the other objects. Finally, we can limit the size of the texture atlas. For best quality we can choose 8192, although this will use more texture memory. Finally, we need to set a location to save the assets by clicking the Set Saved Asset Folder button. We need to make sure it's located somewhere inside of the Assets folder. After that is complete, we can easily find our assets by clicking the Show Saved Asset Folder button. Let's go ahead and combine our characters and see what happens. MeshKit automatically scans the needed textures and changes its format to make sure they're set up correctly. After it's finished building the atlases, MeshKit restores the textures back to their original settings. Quick tip, it's a good idea to turn on local asset caching in your project to speed this process up. Now that MeshKit is done, we can see that the new skinned mesh renderer has been created with a new mesh and a single new material using all of the new atlas textures. Let's press play in the editor and check out the stats to see what improvements have been made. As promised, MeshKit has not only lowered the visible skinned meshes down from 5 to 1, but now our set pass calls have been reduced from 19 to 13, a huge performance boost. Once we're happy with our setup, we can even remove all of the inactive renderers that are no longer being used. At this point, MeshKit doesn't need them to work. Even though our characters are using a single renderer and a single material, we can still move them independently in the scene and control their animations. As the final result of this workflow is a single material and shader, it isn't optimal to use this mode to combine vastly different kinds of shaders. The previous workflow would have been better in that case. 
It's also worth checking the documentation to learn more about the benefits and limitations of each of the two workflows. When we're done, we can finalize the changes by removing the custom setup component. We can simply press the Remove Setup button and accept the prompts to do this. To conclude, combining skinned mesh renderers in MeshKit is incredibly powerful and easy and will help to take your games to the next level. Thanks for taking the time to check out MeshKit.